All right, so here is another cool thing. You can do a Dynamesh. I'm gonna set the resolution at 128 for now. The goal with the resolution is you basically want the absolute lowest number you can get away with without seeing obvious faceting and artifacting and, and uh, uh, losing quality in your geometry. So what does that mean? Well, if I take these two meshes here, these two spheres, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the original one here. And then I think we got the far one there. We can we can lose that one too. So this is the sphere that's on top, and it has Dynamesh active, and its resolution is 64, which is actually pretty low, but it doesn't really make any difference. If I so like these things right here are boolean, so that's going to be a subtraction, and that's going to be an intersection with whatever is happening above. So the rule is the top one has to be an active Dynamesh. And then you can set whatever operation you want here on the bottom. And if I do a merge down, and then I recalculate the Dynamesh by holding Control and dragging off the mesh, it will remove that geometry. And you can see how terrible that edge looks. The reason that edge looks terrible is because I had a low resolution. So if I put it up to like 512, all of this faceting here will stay because that was actually it's currently in the in this uh, the geometry like those are the edges but once i've once i dynamesh it at this uh, resolution we'll get a nice clean boundary and those facets will still be baked in because now they are actually they've been captured by the updated dynamesh so but it's kind of nice you can do some really some really nice hard surface modeling stuff with these and then you know once you've got this edge uh, you can come over and maybe throw like a little bit of a polish on there kind of smooth it up a little bit and uh get it looking nice and clean. Anyway, so that is, that's Dynamesh in a nutshell. And what we're gonna be using it for is, oh, also you can see you get the uh, the poly groups for, you know, for your two pieces of geometry here, which can be kind of useful as well. Again, there's more of this, more, more on this topic and more use cases demonstrated in, you know, pretty good detail in later tutorials. So, uh, you know, if you're not in one of my classes, shoot me an email and I'll point you in the right direction. So anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and Dynamesh this at the default resolution of 128. And you can see I have some of that faceting here kind of baked in and the, the resolution isn't phenomenal, but it doesn't make any difference. It's totally fine. Really what I'm looking for is the ability to, you know, sculpt on it quickly. That wasn't the brush I was going for. It's my clay tubes. Oops, and I just lost my dotted mesh. Sculpt on it quickly. You know, and if I feel like it's fighting with me on something, obviously I should be paying a lot more attention to the reference. I'm just kind of demonstrating here what I'm talking about is I can just do a quick, uh, you know, drag and recalculate and the, the geometry will, will now conform a little bit more uh, cleanly with what I, just, uh, what I just laid down. And that's particularly useful in areas where I might want to use uh, inflate, and there might be a little bit of a risk of, uh, you know, intersecting geometry. Like, let me kind of show you what happens if you do run into that situation. So there's our forbidden situation there. Yuck, nobody likes that. If I Dynamesh it, it's gone. It's nice and clean, it just fills it in. So let me back up there. And again, so just to recalculate the Dynamesh on it, all you need to do is make sure Dynamesh is turned on, on the subtool that you're working on, in the geometry tab and you hold control and just mask something off of the tool and it will go ahead and, and uh, calculate. So I wanna get rid of all these little facets on here. So I'm just gonna head over to the polish brush and our polish slider here in the uh, deformation menu, or deformation sub menu in the tool menu. And uh, that'll clean that right up. Now here's the thing to be careful with. You can hit control D and you know, you end up with some very, very dense geometry that can support a lot of detail. And then if you accidentally hit control and drag off the mesh, you will go right back to your resolution of 128 and you'll lose a lot of your sculpting. So if you're sculpting along and then all of a sudden everything looks like crap, just pause for a second and think, did I just maybe accidentally mask something off of the mesh and then just hit your sweet little control Z button and you'll be uh, back in business. All right, so that's the practical application of Dynamesh. So now that I have this, I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off just to save myself 
any headaches if I do decide to, you know, if I do get a little crazy with the masking and I hit the wrong button. Uh, this way I can be sure that I will not run into too much trouble on that front. All right, so I'm looking at the pinky here. We've got, I'm, I'm using the negative brush, or, or uh, uh, sorry, not, not negative brush, the uh, clay tubes with alt, so it's, it's having a negative functionality. And I'm just gonna kind of carve some of that stuff back. For the, the, the top of the pinky here, that's a pretty straight line. So, you know, my, what's my Z intensity? It's around 13. You know, something in the neighborhood of 15 is usually pretty good for this kind of stuff. Let's see. So we're going to have like, I'm, gonna, I'm using negative just to kind of get a more of a sharp little edge there. And I want to make sure that the top of my pinky, so that's going to be my line, right? So the top of the pinky is is pretty f featureless, you know, writ large. Like obviously there's wrinkles and stuff, but it is generally a cylinder, right? So we want to try to keep this stuff fairly clean. And I can see I have a knuckle thing happening here and then a dent and then some like wrinkly, fat, bulgy stuff over on that side. So make my brush size a little bigger kind of start blocking that in. I, I don't really have a good shot of what, I don't think I do, of what this looks like from the bottom. In fact, I'm positive I don't. That was not a see-through table. So we're going to have to just do our best. You know, rely on general hand knowledge. So you can see the surface here, it's looking pretty rough. And that is completely fine. There are plenty of very effective ways to uh, kind of clean it back up when we get to that point. All right, so I'm going to, before I get too crazy with the detail here, I'm, I'm maybe getting a tiny bit ahead of myself. I'm going to kind of bring my reference back so that I can actually see more of what is going on here. So again, that's going to be tap the Z key. I'm going to go ahead and scale this back a little bit. And I don't, I'm not as worried about this view, but what I can do is kind of scoot it down there and then zoom in a little bit more so I can get as much of the stuff easily seen as possible. So we'll just tap the Z key. So I'm looking at this and it kind of looks like this pinky here is like dashing off a little bit more than I have it. So let's just maybe give it a little bit more flare or whatever. Probably not quite that high there. It's almost more like, I think this knuckle here might just be a little bit too pronounced. Although, yeah, probably that's what's going on. Reference doesn't lie. Something like that. All right, now how does that square up with? Some of these other images here. married with general anatomical understanding. All right, so uh, that's about as far as I want to take that pinky for now. I need to basically do something similar to the rest of the fingers before I can really think about taking this too much further. Uh, otherwise, I kind of run the risk of like, you know, uh, zeroing in too much on one area and then I may need to make a change once I learn more about what's going on with the other geometry and that may or may not result in the destruction of sculpting that I've done. So uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here and uh, pick up the next finger in the next video.